Hello, buddy, and welcome back to the All Right Podcast. Remember, it's not the best podcast, not the worst podcast. It's just the All Right uh, Podcast. Yeah. Well, as you can see right now, we are joined by two people, guests, but in this circumstance, uh, we're guests of these two people's houses, and we're with Sarah and James right now. Hello. 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 I don't mind mm-hmm. IKEA. You hate it. I'm more of the type of guy that, right, I know what I'm getting. Go in and get that stuff and go. I'm not of a guy that goes around and likes looking around. But you three are. So, you can start talking. Like, what is... I don't get it. What? I don't get it. (laughs) Why... Why... Torture yourself like that? It's not torture. It's like heaven. Hold on, pass the mic. Oh, that was a, that was a really big creak off the couch there. No, you're um, that was you. No, because it's either like a hit or a miss. It's like anything. You either love going around and looking at loads of furniture for your house because you're thinking about your future, what kind of house you want, everything like that. So that's IKEA is the mind map for that. It's like how you build your own house. They also had sales as well. Yeah, there was a lot of sales. Why are you looking at me like that I'm for? At it's you. cheap. Because it's the first time. What you you what you look at things in there and you kind of go, oh Jesus, that'd be lovely in my house. I'd I'd love to have a sitting room like that with those kind of things in it. I'd love to build. That that's what IKEA is. Yeah. It's things that you want. Maybe not at that point in time, but you want it when you're older. Right. I'm 26. Yeah. You're 25. Yeah. Well, I'm 25, almost 26. You're 25. You're 23. No, I'm 22. Not. I'm 21. I'll be 22 in June. <laughs> I want to say something so bad right now. What do you want? And you're 24. Mm. Right? We're so young. And we've been talking about... Oh, no. We're not that we've been. We've been we're talking about... Our lives together, Anthony. We've been talking about houses for a while now. Mm. Yeah. And we talk about houses and we talk about how good it's going to be being in your old house and stuff and all. But the more I look at it, the more we're not talking about when the next time we're going somewhere. When it, why, why don't the four of us just jump in a car and go down to a different county one of the weekends? And You know, excitement in your life. We always talk about the future. We always talk about what's going to happen down the line. Why don't we just talk about the present? Why don't we talk about next week? What are we going to do next week? Because, like, of... Why not? Because of COVID, we couldn't go anywhere. Yeah. So it's only now that we're allowed to travel again. So for a while, we weren't able to go anywhere. We weren't able to do anything. We didn't see... each Like, the four of us didn't see each other for a month or two. And now that everything's starting to open back up, we can start thinking about that. Like, oh, let's go down to Wexford for a weekend. Let's go no, just for a drive. A conversation. I don't never heard of it. Let's let's go go to never heard of it. It's fascination it's a, with Wexford now. The podcast is going to die. It's going to go. You're on red. My, my got battery's on red, but I have another battery out in the car. Go run. So we're when just going out there. Go get my chakras. We'll be right yeah. back yeah. after these <laughs> mess. So we're going to get the chakras and we're going to wait until this. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm just going to cut this right now at this point and then we're going to come back in just a second. It's the power of editing. One, two, three. There you go. The power of editing right now. We're back. It literally took us about a minute or two. Yeah, so what we were talking about is is that I was saying that we do talk about like the future a lot, but it's more down the line like five years from now. And I'm not saying that it's good planning ahead and planning for five years and stuff like that as well, but it's also planning for now. And as you said, with COVID and stuff and all, but um, it's just, we need to start planning more of adventures. Yeah. And I think we'll be doing lots more adventures after June because we're very busy all the weekends throughout June mm. because of the hitmen. Mm. So we need to make a pact. July we, 1st. Well, Negative Nancy like, down there in the corner saying no. Because I don't take the mic. No. Well, today was more of like a spontaneous thing because yes, it wasn't planned did, for you. Did, like to you're come talking down. about now, today, today that was a tea. That was spontaneous. Because this today wasn't planned. No. Yeah. Yeah. So why are you going on about it? Why, why are you going on about it? Like, what do you want to do? Like <laughs> travel across <laughs> Ireland in a day? We should do something that we can have stories to tell when we're when we're older. 
I've done a lot of them. When we're... No, but that's what you're supposed to do as a teenager. You're supposed to have stories like that. But as adults, you have more access to the open world. As in, you can go out out of the country and have stories to tell in the country. Everybody has stories to tell in their hometown of what they've done. But to go out of Ireland and say that we got mugged by a Spanish fella in, in, in Salou. I wouldn't want And No, no. But listen, what happened was when we were getting mugged, James came down and cracked him over the head with a bottle or like James came out and just punched and him. James is in no, and James James knows that he is now the superhero of his own friends. Like we look up to James whenever there's trouble. Like we need to have Why are you making James out to be the bad guy? No 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 no. no. <laughs> James is the hero. When people try to mug us, James will defend. So, like so that. What, well, what if James was in the toilet when we're getting mugged? Well, it's up to him. What if see? What would happen if we were all out in Spain or wherever, mm. and James had gone to the bathroom and some lad came up and grabbed one of our handbags mm. and ran off? Would you run after them? I'd help him. You'd scream <laughs> to like get it done and over it more. I'd scream, James! <laughs> I'd scream, and we both know that. I I. I know my personality now. I don't try to act like a tough guy. I really don't. I will scream higher than the two of you for help. I know that I'm not a fighter. I know that I would let that person take my handbag. I'm not afraid <laughs> to admit that. You, on the other hand, you're more courageous. Like, you would actually say, here, I get away from me. Nicola at them. What? I just throw Nicola at them. She'd probably do something. She'd, she'd fight. If someone tried to take her up a handbag, she'd go... Yeah, in the balls. <laughs> Sorry, say that again. I'd kick them in the balls. Why? Um, testicles. This is an Sorry. educational uh, Why channel. Why am I picturing Scrappy-Doo just like... Put him up. <laughs> Put him up. We'd throw Sarah at them. <laughs> Scrappy-Doo. You know I'd love to do, love to do a, a test angle. simulation, right? Mm. And get someone to like fake rub one of our handbags and see what you actually do. One of our handbags. Yeah, yeah like me or Sarah's handbag and see what two you actually do. Your man bag could be robbed. Yeah. It's a satchel. It's a satchel. It's a satchel. Yeah, but we were... Um, uh, yeah, as I was saying, I, I just think we need to plan more. Um, exotic trips and I, I, it, like even if it's in Ireland but in a different county like, so when we're older we have stories to tell we're planning on like getting a what are they called um, an RV a, yeah I was going to say a camper van we're yeah. going to go camping and like travel around Ireland for like a week or something that would be good yeah. think of the stories we'd have to tell do you remember when Anthony was like he tried to get out of the van and he slipped and fell and you know that's a boring story if that happens in real life we're gonna cut to this mm -hmm. and then be like in the future podcast just after it's we'll add it, just, edit it yeah but that's like if I if we had a story like oh do you remember that time when we were like on the road and Nicola was supposed to take the left turn but she took the right and we all go <laughs> but it was like <laughs> 11 o'clock at night I don't want friends like that <laughs> I don't want friends like that. I want friends that go, do you remember when Nicola was supposed to take the left book, James grabbed the wheel and turned right? I wouldn't so, like, do that, man. That's, fun. Wouldn't take the wheel like, that's funny. Like, that's funny. You want near-death experiences. Yeah. That's what you want. I think... I to leave, women. <laughs> I, I do. <laughs> I want death experience. Like, would you go swimming with, like, the little sharks that are off the coast of, like, Cork? Would you do that? If I could swim, which I can, but not good enough. But if I know that, if I got in there and I was... There was a bit of sense of danger, but I just need that bit of adrenaline. But, like, those kind of sharks, yeah, they're sharks, but they're not going to, like, hurt you. They're not going to, like, kill you like a, a great white shark would. Would you still do it? Yeah. It would give you that rush. Yeah. It'll give me a rush. I don't know what it is. I think this COVID thing has just made me realise that I need to kind of live a bit more dangerous. I'm, it's too... You think twice. Bef yeah, it's too... Before COVID, I was very, very... Fuck, sorry. Very safe. safe. And I need a bit of danger. You want to live more. What? I want to get up on an airplane. Parkour. I want to stand on an airplane. Parkour. Strap me in. Parkour. Parachute. Parkour. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All I'm thinking is the opposite. Parkour. Skydiving. Imagine I done that. 
hot air balloon. And the, the like the thought of when you fall out of the plane, the only thing that you're thinking of is I'm free falling right now. Free and falling. it's either <laughs> it's either I'm going to glide and I'm gonna go down to safety or I could possibly die right now. But you have a person strapped to you. It doesn't matter. It couldn't open up. What happens if he took a stroke in midair? Highly unlikely. Could happen. I suppose. Would you go skydiving? Yeah. Would you? Yeah. Well, th- that's like on pretty much everyone's bucket list. Gross. And what do you think it? Is, what do you think it is about skydiving that people just want to like want to go do it? You're just like woo. <laughs> Just woo. Just woo. Just woo. <laughs> woo. What's the most dangerous possible thing that you can think of, but you know you'll survive it, but it's dangerous? I know it's on the spot. I think like those bungee jumping ones, but it's like no water below. Hmm. It's off a of building. Hmm. You're going to like swing down, hmm. then they're going to shoot you. You know, it's usually really tall buildings, the crane on top go up on top of the crane bungee jumping and you're like because if that if that thing snaps you're you're gone Mm. or one that's like on top of the building but like you're strapped into a harness but you're on a swing Mm. and you swing over the edge of the building (laughs) i'd do that but skydiving i I don't know Mm. maybe maybe not (laughs) i could see you and nicola do that i've seen on instagram that two people are strapped in and they're strapped in and the only thing is it's like a harness but it's not even a seat it's just your legs are folded on the there it's coming out the other way and it's strapped up the back of you and around your waist like car and, seat kind yeah of, um, and the two of you are holding but when you get dropped you don't go out you go down and you go down force and then swing i've I yeah. seen it on instagram and i could see the two of you doing that i do it it looks fun yeah. mm. or the slide i sent you i can't remember what country it was but it's in the middle of some country that doesn't normally have like theme parks or mm. attractions but there's this giant oh, yeah. slide and it goes down down and then it's over flat and then down again but it's giant and it's up a giant hill and you go down right down to the bottom but all you're doing is sitting in what looks like a pool ring mm-hmm. and you go to the bottom mm. and there's no barriers in the sides that's how it slides but it just you start at no, the top but like, you go to the <laughs> but it takes a good like three or four minutes to get to the bottom, yeah. which doesn't sound long, I've but for a slide, yeah. it is a long You're time. I'm one of those. Uh, uh, Sarah, hold this, please. I'm one of those zip lines that go for like twenty minutes. Yeah, I love zip Did you lines. Ever see the one in Dubai? Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> Do you ever see the one? Now, I'm just, I'm just saying real quick, um, guys. There is Spotify listeners as well. Remember, Spotify, 10 a.m. GMT time uh, every Monday. And then there is Thursday's YouTube video, uh, 6 p.m. GMT time. That's what our yoke is. So you listen to the audio ver- ver- version for us. But uh, if I was you, I'd watch the YouTube version as well because you'd get to see the faces for the voices. Mm. So, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, did you ever go to the boy i think it no, is i i don't think sorry there. sorry sorry <laughs> <laughs> yeah i went there last week buddy um have you ever seen videos I've about seen dubai yeah and the towers over there fucking and you see when people are strapped in i didn't curse shut up <laughs> do you ever see when people are strapped in but they're lifted up like superman <laughs> and they go across the sea yeah. that would be something i'd like to do mm. yeah okay. <laughs> it would be though <laughs> It would be. And I know this is going straight off topic. Um, but I'm looking at a sticker over in your fridge. And I want to ask, because you know more, Sarah, about it than, I, than me or Nicola. But Nicola's starting to get into it. There's a podcast you're listening to right now. <coughs> um, and you're fascinated with them. Do you want to talk a bit about the podcast and the one you're listening to? Yeah, well, it's called Murder Most Irish. And it's two girls. One girl's from Dublin. The other girl, she is Irish. I can't remember what county. Longford. There we go. Because Nicola's only watched two episodes. (laughs) She doesn't mention it that often and I'm way ahead of Nicola. So it's... Can't remember them. But they talk about murder cases that are either less known or some of them that are really well known, but mainly in Ireland. And they've done one or two in the UK or Scotland, up north, um... 
they just talk about them and try and get everyone's opinion on it. And some of them are cold cases that haven't been solved. Some of them have been solved. Um, not really much to say about yeah. them, really. It's really from, interesting. To yeah, listen to. but like half the podcast is just them having the chats, mm. and they're hilarious. I love like I sit and I'll listen to them when I'm cooking or cleaning or anything, and half the time I'll be I won't even be doing what I'm supposed to be doing because I'm laughing that much. Mm. And they're just really down to earth. And I've texted them a few times on Instagram. Like I'll find something like I found a book in the window of one of the bookshops in Wicklow and it was about feminism. So I sent it to them because they're really big into feminist and uh, protests and stuff. And at the end of each episode, there one of the girls, um, roommate, he will write a song to correlate with the episode and they're always so funny because it's a parody of a normal song. He'll just change the words and yeah. 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 I don't know. That's such an Irish thing. <laughs> and yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Okay. But like if anyone's interested in murder cases or just mysteries or anything or if anyone listens to Bailey Sarian on YouTube she's one of the biggest uh, murder podcast or same podcast murder people murder <laughs> on YouTube I am um, so like and say murder people Sarah said it's murder people <laughs> no but she's like if anyone listens to her um that was the couch <laughs> I've lost my train of trot. That's my train of trot. Tune in next week. That's what I'm not going to talk about. What? Quick. Brain fart. Yes. So we're recording this on a Sunday. On Saturday, for going to Ikea. We went to Ikea and then we also went to Blanchardstown as well. In that space of time, I think at least once all of us have mumbled a word. <laughs> and I want to, if you can remember it, uh, say it because I, I can't remember if I don't want to know. What was Nicola? Nicola mumbled the word earlier. Bragley. <laughs> what did you say? Bragley. Instead of Bradley. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Bradley. And what did you say? He said he, you said something. He said he's, he's, he was making his do, but he was meant to say duvet. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm making a do. Making a do. You're like making a do. <laughs> <laughs> what? You said you were making your duvet, but you said making a do. When? Make Yesterday. Did I? Yeah. You said a do because I was like a do 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 in the in the car. Sarah said so many. Yeah. yeah. She was still said them today. We've all said them. And I want to I want to ask um, the two years as well. Um, you are very into um, you're into all that murder mystery and so as well, and you know a lot of information and you watch stuff like that as well. Would you watch? You'd watch serial killer documentaries, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, and would you be mad into them or would you only watch them every now and again? I'd like, I'd listen to a couple of people on YouTube, like Bailey Sarian, Eleanor Neal, and then Murder Most Irish on Spotify. Yeah. And I wouldn't know much about a lot of them. Like, mm. there's one or two cases that stick with me that I'm like, that are normally like, so if something sticks with me, it's something that hasn't been solved. Mm. But it's so obvious who did it. Like, mm. John Bonnet Ramsey. Everyone has their own opinion on what happened, but if you haven't, if you don't know it, just look it up. It's too long to explain it, mm. but it was a very famous case when it first happened, and even to this day, there's so many people, even people that worked on the case, that are adamant that it was her brother mm. that killed her, and the parents had covered it up, and it hasn't been solved. Because the evidence, it was all, um, it was all like trampled on because instead of waiting for every single thing in the house to be looked over by forensics and everything, the family had family members and friends to come in yeah. and they cleaned everything or else they were like in and out of the house, walking on everything. So there was like so many footprints, they couldn't figure out who, if there was a different killer, like I could be wrong in saying that it was his brother, but if there was somebody out that from outside the family that killed her, there was no footprints because there were so many family members and friends and fingerprints. Mm. And 
there was a letter and yeah, yeah and there was a letter as well that the handwriting changes mm. throughout the letter so it's almost like they started to write it one way and they were trying to make it look out like it wasn't their handwriting mm. and then they tried to change it a little bit more so because they might have slipped back to their normal handwriting and then changed it a bit more so it just didn't correlate mm. and it didn't make sense because it was written on the family stationery it was from, from a book like a notebook that the family owned mm. and if someone was going to kill somebody mm. especially a child or something mm. And they were going to leave a ransom note or I don't know if it was a ransom note, but it was a note anyway. Why would they do it af either after they killed the girl or before? But why would they do it in the house? Why wouldn't they write it at home and bring it? Mm. Who has time to sit down and write? I think it was like two or three pages, yeah. like A4 well, pages, uh, yeah. while a child is dead in was the basement it, they killed a child was it yeah they, they they so what 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 age was the child well john bonnet ramsey she was a pageant queen like mm. a pageant princess whatever you want to call it and i think she was around six mm. five or six and they don't know if it could have been the parents that did it mm. and they just didn't want to be associated with the pageants anymore yeah. or if it was the brother being jealous because she was getting all the attention because she was such a gorgeous girl. What age was the brother? I think the brother was like eight. I so it's not even that older. Like it's Maybe the, the daughter was getting all this praise from the parents and she was yeah. the number one golden child and kids around that age as well, especially, is, was it America? Yeah. Okay. Don't quote me on this, but <laughs> America is kind of a fucked up place, you know. Yeah. There's so many. Oh, my freedom! And the reason is because there's so many different types of people over there. Do you get me? Yeah. Um, in Ireland, you know, there's different counties, and you know, pe some people are into, like, the likes of I would call football, football, but you'd call it soccer. Mm. You know. But Ireland is just as bad as well. Like, yeah. mm. there was a case there a couple of years ago, and I think it's only like coming out on the news now. Um about this mother and she was mentally like there was something wrong with her like she was a stork unstable, unstable yeah. yeah and the the husband was like gone they were living in Dublin I think and the husband had gone to Cork to work so he was gone like for the night or something and the mother took the two kids out of school and there was already a younger kid in the house mm. and she suffocated all three of them and she left notes beside their bodies saying to the husband, don't go in here. I'm so sorry. Like, and she'd left another note to him saying, I'm like, I'm. there's something wrong with me. I need help. There's something inside me doing this. So she... She killed all the kids, but she knew there was something wrong with her. Imagine, I'm going to call this podcast the Morty Mystery Podcast or something or yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. I think that's already Well, the name of the episode. The episode... Sorry, James, I wasn't more specific. The episode, I might call it that. Yeah. But we'll see. Well, but I'm thinking that you know a lot of information. You you watch a lot of that stuff and you have a lot of information. And from listening to you talk and also Nicola coming in every now and again, but especially you talking, I honestly think that you two should start using their own podcast. No, and you no, see, no. You it's the last thing they need to do. A lot, do, a lot of Because they'd get too into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Get too into it. They'd run out of stories. No. <laughs> and then you hear about a lot of people going missing around these parts of the woods. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but like there's Malloy a lot. Malloy murders. There's a lot of research that goes into it. And Murder Most Irish, they have said a few times that there's some times where they just can't do an episode mm. where they, they usually have one or two episodes researched mm. before they go to film one and they'll, they'll film, the, film the other one the next week but sometimes it just gets too much to them and they yeah. get yeah. too emotional about it there's one where I think one of the girls start crying or yeah. she tears up or something but I know she said she was bawling her eyes out when she was reading it and researching it but I think she just teared up when she was recording the episode mm. but with John Bonet Ramsey there's so much research that you'd have to do and there's so much um facts that are actually wrong about it yeah and like some of the things i've said i could be a bit wrong because uh, i haven't actually like listened to anything or watching anything or 
read about it in a good while. Mm. And because I listen to a lot of them, I get mixed up in a few of them. So, mm. like, and I forget a lot of it because there's so many cases. Like, I remember one of the cases that Murder Most Irish talk about is a woman from Dublin. I think she was from the flats in Dublin. And her her partner was... I think like she was on drugs and everything. Her two daughters were on drugs and the partner was either abusive or just was verbally abusive or something where they got into a fight. And basically, I can't remember if it was her that killed him mm. or if it was the daughters that killed him. Mm. But they chopped his body up, buried it in different areas in Dublin. Mm. But then they went and buried the head somewhere but because it was close to where they found some other part of his body and they couldn't identify him, mm. they dug up the, the head again, had it in a plastic bag, carried it on the bus and all throughout town for an hour or two before they found somewhere else to bury it. Mm. So there's people that were on that bus that they know now since it came out. Mm. Like, I was on that bus that morning because mm. they gave the time. They gave what bus it was. And they're like, I was on that bus. There was a dead man's head on that bus with me. Mm. And there's just... Some people Mm. are so messed up in the head. (laughs) But I think the two daughters got longer time in prison than the mother, even though it was... I think it was the mother that killed him. Mm. But the two daughters chopped them up and the mother was sitting on the sofa with either a bottle or a can I'm or not, something. I'm laughing in the background here and it's not I'm not laughing about any serious murders or anything like that. But I'm just picturing that as a skit like you get on the bus and then some chap there like is sh- covering up his jacket because there's blood on his shirt. Or like, ah, how's it going, Martin? How are you doing? What what you got in there? Ah, oh, just uh, me football gear about to head out, you know. Mm. Oh, Jesus, it went well for you, now. You haven't been training for a while. You, everyone was a bit worried about you, you know. You went you went a bit dark and a bit mysterious for a while and I th- it's good to see you're getting back out. Of, yeah, I'll talk to you after a booty. Well, he actually just has a head in a bag. Mm. Like, you think it's a football or something? Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. what I mean. Like, how can someone have the balls to do that to go and bring someone's like a, de- a part of a dead body because mm. they're around gone in, in the bag. head mm. they're just like, not there that's yeah. what fascinates me with a lot of serial killers yeah. or even just someone that's just killed one person or just anything like that I'm, their head is so messed up that it's fascinating I'm only interested like, in like the real big time killers yeah, like, like Ted Jack Bundy. the Ripper yeah. No, Jack the Ripper. Yeah, but like... Because that's ongoing. Going, yeah. That's going to keep on going on. There, there'll they be stories. Mm. Stories and everything. But I, it was a, like... I think it was a whole thing that oh, Jack the Ripper was actually supposed to be like a hate crime towards women. And a lot of the women that were murdered were prostitutes. Mm. But it was a whole thing like... You know, he was actually... If it was a he, because people don't know if it was actually a woman... Mm. going around killing prostitutes because she seemed to, to be unladylike or something mm. like that like breaking breaking the rules of churches and everything like that by going around sleeping and you're being unholy like unsacred all that kind of crap mm. like the, there's so many That'd different stories and ways to put it like the that whole thing or it's just straight out like no get the prostitutes off mm. the street all together by killing them all. It was, mm. There's, like, so many. Yeah. yeah. But Jack the Ripper, I know it sounds weird, but Jack the Ripper is one of my favourites. <laughs> or, like, Ted Bundy, how there was so many people, that he, or women, that he killed. Mm. And nobody still, to this day, knows how many people he killed. Because yeah. he changed his number mm. so many times. Mm. Like at the start, he maybe said he killed forty girls, you and know then him, don't you, Anthony? <laughs> I know Ted Bundy. Yeah, I am. I know Ted Bundy personally. Uh, if I have to say so myself, I watched the Ted Bundy documentary. I want to ask you as well, Sarah, because you're mad into this also. Um, I don't know if I'm going to take out the part about dreams and stuff at the start because since we start talking about all this, this is very interesting. It's naturally flown as well. Um, so I want to ask you about. I was in college and. 
uh, my media analysis teacher showed me a documentary. Now it's a, it's a short film, and I think after this I'm gonna get just the just it's only ten minutes long. It's really the acting of the kids are really good. Do you know the case about the Bulger case about the kid about the two kids with the with the other kid and they take him in a shopping mall? Oh, that I was listening to Murder Most Irish the other day and I was bawling my eyes out every time okay, I hear about that. that and the first time I heard about that I was in transition year and do you know the way in transition year you do like little tasters of different classes yeah. and stuff and we had I think it was like you do it for four weeks in whatever school I went to but we did a law um, class mm -hmm. and they were talking about different cases and facts about law and everything and she spoke about that and every single girl in the class and a couple of the guys they said you need to stop talking about this because all of us were starting to cry yeah. and she's like no but you need to learn you just need to know what people are like and it, i think I, there was I'll only show you what people can really be like yeah. now in a minute if i you think don't shut up. there was only four people that mm. stayed in the class everyone else got up and left and we came, went to the principal because we're like we're not sitting there mm. crying over like talking about such a horrendous case mm. and we're not going to sit there and listen to it in school no yeah like that's not something that you like you go and you deliberately show mm. 15 16 year olds i think that's how you're old you're in transition year i'm not yeah. sure mm. but then the four guys that sat there they're like oh i'm a hard lad kind of mm. and they all when we went back to the class to get our bags and everything they're, oh well we we read everything else about it they're like it wasn't that bad and they're going on about it and yeah. we're like That's they killed they a child they weren't loved enough as children yeah, like, like they were like if you don't know I'm going to give you a little short analysis a synopsis some would say um, so basically there was these two young lads I think about 10 and 11 years of age and they were into oh now my camera's about to go off um, so I'm just going to edit real quick and we're going to keep talking about it because it is, it's just naturally flowing I'm like holding my breath while I'm talking I don't know why probably scared <laughs> right so we're back here sorry about that for a second for the audio listeners it's just normal probably but for the people on the video sorry about that from James there in the background. lovely to start it off um but yeah it's a bit it's a talk <laughs> we are not sponsored by tesco <laughs> but tesco we'll get sued. but tesco if you want to sponsor us now yeah, yeah. Or, you know, Fanta if, lemon. if you want to yeah fanta lemonade to get us hyped up we do y you need that and i think nicola hasn't started hyped no, up yet. Not hyped yet no you're not hyped yet but don't worry we probably get hyped in i think the yeah. stuff we're talking about right now was not hyping you up but you might get into it but it's very interesting about office supplies and stationery <laughs> then she'd be like Aah! and you'll see her Sticking getting up and like you have to go <laughs> but anyway right so yeah so show short synopsis um it's a bulger case um sorry i i have an itchy hole um sorry um i'm not i really don't have an itchy hole but sometimes i'm not messing sometimes we just go on no 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 i just want to say sometimes i have an itchy hole like, and how do you solve it? I don't know. I just kind of between the seats at home, but I'm, I don't have a hitchy hole now. I don't do it now. Um, so it's a short synopsis. Um, okay, so a short synopsis, right? So this young uh, kid, uh, these two kids, don't laugh now. No, I That's, just remember last week. No, 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 stop. No, stop, 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 stop. This is like really bad. This is really bad. No, Nicholas, start now. Nicholas, start. No, listen, right? Listen, listen, then you can talk about last week when. Later on. Right, uh, right, yeah, hold on, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about, yeah. But hold on, wait for this, yeah. So, basically, short synopsis, these two boys were in a mall, um, and it's in England, and they were very bored, and they seen this kid on his own. Now, this kid's only about four, three? I think it was three. Three years of age. These kids are like... And 11 he 10 own. he was like his ma one aisle away from his mom his ma and they lured him and they were seen on ct cctv bringing him out they're they around the 10 or 11 weren't they seen on the cctv in the shopping center yeah they weren't seen on CT cctv anywhere and it was so long before they found who they were yeah. because they seen them going out i think it was a butcher's yeah and they seen their heads going along yeah and it was behind a wall mm. and all you could see was from their head up mm. and when they seen that they realized they were looking for people that were maybe like 15 16 
mm-hmm. when they seen those kids on that CCTV because yeah. it was where they found the body it was on that road where they knew they would have walked to yeah. get to where they ended up finding the body yeah. when they seen those kids their hearts dropped because yeah. they realised these weren't 16, 17 year old teenagers no, these were, were kids because yeah, of their height because the height of the wall mm. was only shoulder height for them yeah. so it was it was but what happens is is that they get the kid and they bring the kid and the kid starts crying so they leave the kid on its own by the train tracks right and then they grab him again and there was this elderly woman by a corner shop that say where's the ma and he's like oh we're bringing him back to his ma now he's lost and he's like right and they were going to bring him back but then they put him at a train track and what one of the fellas done was so fu- they start the hitting him over the head with a rock they got batteries shoved them sorry for the graphic people but they got yeah. batteries double a batteries put them up his arse they found him with double a batteries up his arse his head smashed in and if you watch that short for them or if you watch that it's fucking heartbreaking and that short for them the kids in that short for them when you watch it because our teacher showed us to show you the acting in it as well mm. you'd really honestly think that them kids in that film done that the way they cried in that film, the way they, when they're getting questioned by the police in that film, um, the way they're answering questions, the way they're doing with their body movement and their facial expressions and the tone of voice, you're literally just like, oh shit, it's, it actually seems like they're, they're actually, they've actually done it, the way they react. Yeah. And it's so good. Um, I'd, I'd like to show it to you, but I don't know if you'd be up for it, but it's yeah. fucking, it's about 10 minutes long. Fifth, no, about 20 minutes long yeah. um, but um, it's so good that's, well, I, I don't know but I'm interested in the whole psychological part of it I don't think kids I know 10 to 12 is a very fucking aware age mm. but I think sometimes kids don't think of the grim end and the yeah. consequences I, I don't think they realise <laughs> this is just a bit of shits and giggles yeah. until they go Oh shit! No, I think no. I think it, I they have to come from some sort of a fucked up family. Yeah. They yeah, need to see also, violence and aggression like that to replicate it and do it themselves. Yeah. And the whole thing with them seeing the lady, and they're going to bring him back is the whole way from the shopping centre to the train tracks. Mm. They're pinching them. They're punching them. Yeah. And but one, was one kicked him, yeah, he kicking him and everything. Didn't really want to do it. It was the other fella that was brought up from the bad family. He had a really bad upbringing, more than the other fella. But he had a really bad upbringing. Like he was the one that was determined to do this. Mm. And I don't know, like he was like edging on the other guy. Ha- do you hear what happened to him? Do you hear what happened to him now? Where they are? Yeah, they're out of prison. prison, right? But one of them was recognised three times. He got. His face, he got plastic surgery to change his face three times when he was older, yeah? And he still get found. And his name's been changed three times. His name's been changed three times. And the fella that actually done it to the kid, he is now back in jail for child pornography. Mm. Yeah, he this is a very strong episode right now. Probably the strongest I've done since I started the podcast. And probably we will do... Um, you know, well, um, is, people like that that have something seriously wrong with them. Like, why do people feel it's a good thing to let them back out of prison? Yeah, it was because it, they were so young and mm. it doesn't matter were, though. Like he's still going on and doing that in adult life. It was because they were charged as adults, and mm. then when they went to repeal it, the judge that they repealed it with was like, "Oh, they were charged as adults. They shouldn't have been charged as adults. Mm. They have done their time. They've done this and that and the other." they've been charged as adults so mm. we need mm. to let them go yeah, no it's but, but it's all corrupt as well because there's the money behind that they're paying people off they're paying the like the the news and everything like that to cover yeah. up and everything like that so and it's not it's not a true justice yeah. system the whole thing with them seeing the lady is after punching him and kicking him and pinching him and everything the woman they were scared that the woman seen bruises yeah. on them and like scratch marks because mm. they were like, scratching them and everything that's mad, and man. that's when they decided well we can't bring him back mm. that we're going to be found out that we've heard mm. him yeah so their logic was let's bring him to the train tracks and kill him yeah like I don't think they meant to kill him. One, one of them, one of them had the plan to do it, and the other fella didn't really know. He was just yeah. tagging along, and you can see from that short film that he's like, oh, he's more the 
the tag along, it'll do what his friend says. Do you get me? And when they were in court, the two of them were seen and they were bored. You could see, you know, when a child mm. is bored, mm. you can tell by their face. They're, innocent. They're not paying attention no. to what the judge is saying. They don't know what's going on. No, the they don't know are. what people are saying about them. They don't know what they're being charged with. Yeah. And there's one, one of them had kept asking, oh, when can I go? Can I go to the bathroom? Yeah. When can I go and leave this? They room? didn't, they didn't. Can I get up and go and go to, go do this, go do that? Mm. Yeah, but their kids have been, never been told right from wrong. Yeah. From the start. You can see in the short film that the mother, one of the mothers that were, they were so loving. And that was the one that, the kid that didn't want to really do it. Yeah. But the other fella, you've seen the parents. And when, when in the short film, when you've, I'll, I'll put a link down in the description below if you want to go watch the short film. But you just, it's up to yourself now. Don't be blaming me if you watch it and then you, you feel a bit mad about it. Like, but um, I might put at the start of warning or something more. Yeah, you know I mean, because it's a trigger warning. Because a lot of people probably, people will listen to this and go, I oh, I didn't want it. We're just going to talk about IKEA. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we start getting into murders and then Sarah start getting into them story and I was then getting intrigued because you know I like watching stuff like that yeah. as well. Yeah. I'd sit there and watch that stuff and I don't know what it is. Ruin in the podcast. Um sorry about that. It's okay. Um What was I going to say now? Uh She's gonna ring yeah, me again. I know. <laughs> Do you want to put it on silent there? When the two boys when they're talking about them on one of the podcasts i think i could be wrong and i could be mixing this up with a different case but i think the guy that was wanting to hurt the child and everything mm. i think he had been to a few different a few schools and got kicked out or had moved schools mm. and then the other kid was just a shy kid no friends and yeah. then the troublemaker as i'll call him sat beside him became friends with him and he was like oh someone's talking to me I've got a friend now so yeah. I'll do whatever he wants yeah yeah. I yeah, think that was the whole thing like, with him if he's if you know he's coming from a bad family as a parent why would you let your child interact with people like that mm. like the parents have full responsibility there of dictating who their kids can be friends with and they're obviously letting them hang out with him could yeah have been, could have been a thing of the mother saying that maybe that child was a bit wild maybe it's like ah well, my my child. my angel child will rub off on them. They they'll be a bit better. Like that some hurt. some parents, if they are that kind of heart, they'll mm. see kids like that. And I was like, ah, may, may, maybe just give them a chance, kind of a yeah. thing. Do you ever see ab, uh, abducted? Not abducted. It's called. I think it's called abducted in plain sight. Where right? I don't. I think it's called. I don't know what it's called. Isn't it? Yeah. Me and Nicola watched. I had to watch it for media analysis for my college, and I had to write up a piece on it. Yeah. This guy, Sarah, mm. yeah, was a, a pervert, right? And there was this girl, and he was grooming her since a young age. Now, if you haven't seen this, right, I think you should watch it. I think I've seen it. Because I think, you'd, I think you'd find it interesting. Hey. Hi. James is now at the back. Um, and we're going live now to the back of the couch. <laughs> um, yeah, so if I don't want to say any more, but maybe next time if we're doing a podcast all together, we'll, we'll talk more about that, right? So um, I kind of, I don't know how to get off the subject, really, because... Chakras. Uh, chakras. Chakras. So we're going to give some positive. <laughs> we're going to go some positive. But you have a story. Firstly, like... With gonna the go back to no, <laughs> gonna go back to murder. No, but firstly, just as a reminder, like the podcast, it's Murder Most Irish. It's on Spotify, and they have an Instagram page. If anyone is interested, even slightly interested in this, I'd go and listen to it. Even if you they they say on their Instagram each time they upload a video when the talk of the case comes on. So even if you don't want to listen to murder. You can skip. <laughs> you can Murder. skip that part and just listen to the girls. They're hilarious. They talk about what's going on in the world. They talk about what's going on in their lives. One of the girls has a five-year-old girl, and she's been on a few times saying one or two things. And even if you see on their Instagram, they always put up just funny things. So, just wanted to let to remind you what the podcast was. Yeah. So now back to chakras. Back to chakras, right? Yeah. So you have a funny story uh, that you wanted to tell. You said you started laughing. Chakra. What happened to me last you week? I don't mind. I I said that I'm very open. I'm a very open person. Um, 
and I don't care what people know about me because the more people know about me, do you get me? Or the more I say out, mm. that they can't hold it against me. Okay. So this is news to Sarah and James as well, right? right so I don't think it was last week. It was the week before. I think it was last week. Get your phone. Well, no, for this part, okay. The year was 1967. <laughs> it was about two weeks ago, and we were bringing the dogs for a walk in yeah. the park, yeah. and your friend Casey was there. Yeah. And you needed to go to toilet. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Listen to this. So you both went uh, toilet number twos, and... Um, you came back to the car then hmm. and you said you didn't say this out loud but you said in your head the moment you sat down in the car you knew you hadn't wiped properly oh. <laughs> no. now in my defense i have a very hairy hole okay oh. I, have a, I have a very hairy hole it's it's no 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 no, no. i need to go to someone that's a pr- that i need to go to someone that doesn't know me <laughs> um, because I don't want to horrify the person for the rest I of life. I recommend a few salons, they won't know you. Lovely, I'll do that. Um, yeah, my, you know, my, my bum bum is hairy and um, sometimes blokes get this problem. That Yeah, so what happened was is that I had the poo and I went back into the car and I was like, what what's happening right now? And... As soon as I got up out of the car, I felt that there was something wrong. Squishing to you? Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. If you're talking about murder and you're not getting over that, right? Okay. You're gonna get. Uh. In this episode, we're talking about murder and shite. Right. Listen. Right. The thing with murder is I don't know these people. I'm not talking about the graphic <laughs> details. Right now, we're talking about one of my best friends' poo on his arsehole. And this is what happens when you become a best friend of mine. You get to listen to this Along and share with a load of strangers on Spotify. And That's YouTube. okay. That's okay. It's all right. I'm not ashamed. It's people do this cut into a small clip and put on it yes this is the promo um and i i had to run up re-wipe. i had to rewipe <laughs> i had to run up i had to change clothes and that wasn't the first time that happened i remember i had gastric i played golf in the park with a friend of mine and i remember i swung the golf club and when i swung the golf club everything came out and I had to hold me arse cheeks and run home. And the girl that I fancied so much at the time, she lived right across the road. And I fancied her a lot. And I ran right past her while holding the cheeks of me arse, horrified in me face. And I remember Ross going up to her and she goes, oh, hi, Anthony. He goes, hi, bye. And I ran. And I ran around the corner. And I remember Ross going up to her. And he's like, oh, hi, uh, Anthony. Just like, go off. What's up with him? And he goes, oh, he just shit himself. <laughs> <laughs> he told he knew I liked her and he goes oh he's just shit himself I think you said that too well. I've said this so many times on videos and stuff like that, and he shit himself so there's a little segue into the next thing now so about the next pos- to be learned here is white a guy double check and triple check that mm-hmm. you have wiped your arsehole right yeah so if you have a lot of hair triple check keep yeah. wiping until the tissue's clean okay. i do and right come here up this know, so keep a pack of baby wipes in your pocket clean, bum, 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 bum. <laughs> that's gotta be like that's a, the outro song for good hygiene we, from we need Malloy. we need this yeah. to be repeated with better audio keep wiping till your arsehole's clean bum 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 yeah, that's, that's all I got. the promo. That is a great song. That's a good song. Um, yeah, so uh, to get off that kind of subject and more positivity. So in to get off murder, to poo, to, to, to Yeah, so it's positive now. And this is the last segment that we do on the podcast. Um, and Nick will only start bringing this in. It's the first time you're actually doing this. Mm. Um, first time so I brought them with me. First time yeah. you brought you with them. It only took you three episodes. Yeah. Um, after saying three episodes, you will do it. So, yeah, so go on. Start now, Nick. Right, so we'll start with the meaning again. So, chakra means wheel and refers to energy points in your body. They are taught to be spinning discs of energy. 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 <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> that should stay open and aligned as they correspond to bundles of nerves, major organs, and areas of our energetic body that affect our emotional and physical well being. I'm sorry, you have to put that like, <laughs> clip back to earlier when we were talking about energy. This video is going to have so many promos for Instagram. Yeah. yeah. 
And there we go. There's another. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My voice breaks. You're so, <laughs> there's seven chakras. Um, they are circular vortexes of energy that are placed in seven different points on the spinal column. And there's are another book up there. Seven. Seven. <laughs> Nicola, how many? We're going to count on the screen. Seven. <laughs> and all the seven <laughs> chakras are seven connected to energies. the various organs and glands within the body. They are also responsible for disturbing the energy. <laughs> The life energy, which is also known as ki or prana. I don't know if I'm saying them right. And you you believe in all this as well, James, don't you? You believe in all energy and so do you wanna talk a bit about that before Nicola gets into our little meditation and stuff? Like what's the, what 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 has you in that? Like why why do you get into that? I have gone through many journeys, my friend. <laughs> many spiritual awakenings. Um I didn't hit off this, did I? No, I no, didn't. You're okay. <laughs> See, I started off a lot with the whole spiritual aspect of it and obviously Buddhas and stuff like that, but... Reading secrets. Yeah, and the, the whole law of attraction. But the more that I get into it and the more that I go through my life, I have a greater understanding of it and not so much the spiritual aspect of it, but more so the subconscious mind, mm. which is the scientific part of it. I just realised I'm off camera, yeah. but... For, for the <laughs> it's It's... <laughs> It's all you need is my voice, so it's grand. Um, yeah, the, the more that I really look into it and I understand it, it has helped me so much in my life. And I'm not, I'm not like taking the piss about it or anything, but it means a lot to me and has helped me a lot. Mm. And yeah, you know. Yeah. It's even said. It's to me, I. It's one of these things that I'm. I'm never going to be able to explain. Like I could tell you, I was like, right, Anthony. Here's this book on the subconscious mind. You go read that. Mm. You will have your own perspective, and eventually we'll get certain key points through our own perspective that kind of link up and go. I get what you mean now, mm. but you have to. You have to go through it yourself mm. to actually understand. It. Like, I started off with the whole thing and eventually it got really overwhelming. I was like, why isn't all this kind of spiritual stuff working for me and everything like that? So I decided to go into black magic instead and that helped a lot more. No, I didn't actually. No, I decided to look into the subconscious part of it. And in this book that I'm, I, I read quite a bit, like I'd read a chapter a few times before moving on the power of the subconscious mind mm. it will actually talk about um the whole thing with buddhists and everything like that the beads that you see buddhas with they're actually their mantras mm. they're for manifesting they're not just for praying mm. and a lot of buddhas will actually tell you that like it people are like oh they're prayer beads mm. but they're not they're to concentrate your mind on the one thing that you actually want to manifest in your life and things that you want to change like it could be i think there was one guy and he was talking about there's just like 120 beads mm. on it or something he was like oh so you have 120 different things you want it was like no you do the same thing again and again mm. and it's more so focusing on your mind it's like the physical aspect of it is i start doing sit-ups the other day my stomach's not used to it yet, but eventually the more I do it again and again and again, the mind works the same way. Mm. And then over time you build up the same thing, your brain gets used to it, it's repetition, it's there and it starts to sick. So you start to channel things into your mind and then tra train into your brain. All right. It's actually good for helping people kind of get out of rural as well. Mm. If you're just in a bad place, then you can kind of change it around and then over time you can say I'm not a worthless sack of shit mm. <laughs> I'm okay I'll keep going um, but you, you can you kind of see what I mean like you, it, it's the same thing with chakras because it can amplify certain areas mm. that you want to focus on you want to be your well-being your fitness your mental health everything like mind, that mind body and soul yeah exactly that that's that's mainly what the subconscious mind is kind of back in the frame, back in the frame I, I like going off frame I don't like being on camera um but it's to really, it's the best way I can put it is it's repetition. Mm. 
the same cycle and you start to kind of slowly over time reprogram your brain yeah. to think in a new way mm-hmm. and, it's, and uh, like, it's this this also ties in with the thing called uh paradigm yeah. say easiest way of putting it is anthony you only like apple juice and that's all you'll ever like mm. and you've been drinking apple juice all your life and eventually one day eventually one day you drink orange juice mm. and you realize I actually like more than just apple juice by that I mean like your parents tell you growing up you can do this you yeah. can do that but that's all you can do yeah. you can do nothing else other than that yeah. the whole thing about training the subconscious mind is to think in a new way mm. um, break the paradigm mm. it's not it, like some people will say that's a bit up in the air like mm. a bit gone in the head to be trying to think like that but you will find that a lot of su- successful people i'm not i'm not gonna say i was like oh like that guy bill gates with all the money um it's nothing like that i mean successful in their life not not just with money, money yeah. i don't i don't not mean famous people someone can be successful without being famous yeah and it basically can change your life in literally any area you see fit yeah and uh, you do have to be to a certain extent start believing that it will actually work you do have to be a little bit deluded to allow yourself to go into this mindset but it does work and i can honestly say that from my opinion from the places that i've been mentally physically i've seen a picture of myself earlier i nearly cried (laughs) i was a chunky monkey (laughs) even something as simple as instead of saying I want to do this course. I want to get this amount of money. I want to buy this TV. Instead of saying I want and having that doubt in your mind, it's saying I will have this TV. It's mine. I will do this course. I will be successful. Mm. I will have this amount of money. And the more you say it, the more you're going to believe it and the more the more you're going to be willing to do the things that are needed to get to that place, to get to having those things like my course because yeah. I knew I had to do my course mm. it's not necessarily to improve on acting I can't get any better than I am because honestly I'm just spot on I'm brilliant I'm amazing voice but crack yeah <laughs> uh, voice crack it's from I was hanging around with Marty McFly over there <laughs> doc we have to go back in time um, we have five minutes left before the podcast ends okay we'll get to your chakras in a minute calm down will you uh what was I saying? I lost me train of thought there. You, you don't have to be famous to be successful. Yeah. Those are the areas that I needed to improve. Yeah. I knew I knew I had to do the course. And it was the whole thing in my head for ages. It was like, I oh, know, I guess I'm just like, like, you know, I'm just not suited for that. I'm like not good at school, not good at courses. I tried a course, failed. Yeah. So it was something in my head. It was like, no, this time you're going to do it. And I did it. Yeah. And also during lockdown, doing an acting course during lockdown, yeah. constantly being on camera, trying to act. Yeah. And your teacher saying, you're slow on your cues. No, miss, I'm just buffering. And it's it, it was so bloody draining. And I said to Sarah, it did make me hate acting a little bit, yeah. but I had it in my head. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do it bloody well. And I did. And I kept having Round of applause, to... please. Thank you. Well, I just kept having to remind him that, that this, 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 <laughs> this is what he wanted to do for him and had to remind him of all of the things that he was wanting to do and the reasons behind it and law of attraction and reminded him and the one thing that he hates that I do but I constantly do it is using his own words against him I with saying so things about the law of attraction saying like this is what you wanted you're doing this for you yeah. reminding him each time and using his own words against him is the one thing he hates but it's the one thing that works but it works it does it, that works with everyone yeah. mm. No, I'm not, I wasn't going to continue speaking. Oh, okay. I was just yeah, well, yeah, yeah, well, I think that's the everything then. So there. just go the chakras. The but yeah, that's good. Um, we will talk about more of that in a, maybe in a future episode and so like that. Um, yeah, before we uh, get to you real quick and so, um, we usually we do podcasts and we're really 
uptight and more afraid of what to say. I think this podcast was very successful. Um, it was really realistic yeah, and real. So and that that's yeah. normal. It's life. So uh, before we go, Nicola. Sure, they're more comfortable. So Nicola, go on. You can uh, you have two minutes there to explain. So do you want to hold this up to the camera? Yes. So that is the crown chakra. What it is, it's a violet white crystal and you place it on the top of your head. Its main function is for knowledge, understanding, inspiration, spirituality, positive thoughts and higher consciousness. It physically affects your pineal gland, your pituitary gland. I honestly thought she said penis. No. Your cerebral cortex, your brain, your hypothalamus and your central nervous system. Mm. Um, that was my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> I toss a mill. <laughs> and the type of crystals you can use are I'm gonna mess these up. Amethyst, clear Amethyst. quartz, selenite, ametrine, serpentine, and lodolite. So I'm not sure what that Sounds is. Sounds like transformers. Amethyst or clear quartz, I don't know. Right. But that's the crown. I think that one is clear quartz. The one you Wait, have. What's this, you one? Pass yeah. it along. What's this one? <laughs> that one is the third eye chakra. So it's indigo in colour and you place it in between your eyebrows. Yeah. Its main function is for intuition, insight, um, imagination, concentration and self-knowledge. It physically affects your pituitary gland, your eyes, your brows, your base of your skull and your biorhythms. Okay. Um, the crystals to use then are sodalite, amethyst, blue quartz, azurite and ametrine. So, okay. can I tell you a story about this one before? Well, we only have a minute left. Okay, one, so this was the first one. This was the first chakra I used and I was lying down in bed and I placed it in front of my eyebrows and I had read before that when you're actually concentrating properly you can feel vibrations on it and I was doing that and I could feel the vibrations actually on my forehead mm. and that's how you know you're like you're putting all your energy into this crystal like and you're like not I don't mean like yeah you're I don't mean it's like and it pops in I mean like you're focusing on it so much and it the vibrations are just like rebalancing Mm -hmm. your body so that's the cool story good well guys that's it we have for the alright podcast this week thanks very much for our two guests coming on thanks very much Thank you too. Thank you. Um, guys, remember, it's not the best podcast, not the worst podcast. It's just the all right podcast. 